Let's define what is a startup exactly, and let's go over some definitions. To actually have a clear definition of what's a startup, let's look at what's not a startup. A small local business, what is that? Those are familiar businesses like a restaurant, a gym, a store, any kind of local business. What's similar about them? They generally target a relatively small market. They're not going to be a billion dollar store unless they open some kind of franchise or unless they open many, many locations, but a single one generally will stay somewhat small. It doesn't mean that the owner can get rich. It just means that that store isn't meant to be like a billion dollar thing and there isn't high growth and there also isn't innovation. So it's the same old business that you're familiar with. So what would be innovative? It would be a new take on something. So gyms on the moon, that would certainly be a cool startup, something that like Elon Musk would start, you know, something crazy. Obviously, this is a ridiculous example, but if you have some kind of a new take on gyms, like gyms through an app or something like, like that, if it's innovative enough, usually also technical, then okay, now it's a startup. But there's another categorization of businesses, lifestyle businesses. These are businesses that are usually meant for one person to start and fund their life and give them flexibility. This can be an online business like affiliate marketing. Traditionally, it's been some types of offline businesses. For example, a taxi driver. That's a lifestyle business. Maybe it's not the greatest lifestyle because it doesn't make the taxi driver rich usually, but at the same time, this person can go and drive whenever they want. So they're kind of their own boss. But the startup of taxi is obviously Uber. They innovated and they disrupted the industry. So startups, they also tend to be disruptive. It's not a total requirement, but usually because it's different, that differentiation tends to be a little better, a little unique. And because of that, it has a high correlation with being disruptive to the industry. Now, let's go over a few other criteria for what's a startup. Usually it's run on a small budget, usually bootstrap, meaning not funded, but run resourcefully, meaning the founders just figure out a way how to get the marketing for free, get whatever equipment they need for free or cheaply. Being resourceful is the substitute for having money. And usually it's run by a small team with complementary skill sets. That means they are not overlapping skill sets. For example, if three programmers wanted to start a business, well, they have no idea of any marketing skills or business skills. They just know how to program. So there would be a lot of holes in that team. So that would be a team with overlapping skill sets. But a great team with complementary skill sets is if one person is a people person who's good at business and strategy and another person who's a good technical person who is a programmer and maybe another person is good at marketing. So these people, they help each other. They fill in the holes. That's an ideal startup team. Startups can also be run by a single person as well though. Another thing that startups have in common is generally the goal is high growth and they target a big market and there's a high potential, 100 million plus, billion plus. That's because at some point of the startup's progress, investors might come in and the investors want to target a big market because obviously they need to get a big return on their investment. Also, startups tend to be technical, but that's not 100% necessary. There are plenty of innovative companies that are not that technical. And lastly, keep in mind that all these definitions are not strict. They're fuzzy because there are many exceptions. For example, if you have a restaurant, okay, that's a small business, that's a local business. But what if you aim to start a chain of unique restaurants, maybe a franchise. Okay, well, that's no longer a small business by itself. Now it has some properties of an innovative company, a growth company, a company that targets a big market. So it's kind of in the middle. It's more like a Venn diagram than something that can be technically siloed. But at the same time, the criteria for a startup are generally understood. High growth, big opportunity, innovative, often technical, and smart and savvy and resourceful team. 
Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment and press the all important thumbs up. Now, this video was taken from my full course on entrepreneurship, how to start a business and business planning. If you feel like you learned something from this video and it gave you value, feel welcome to click on show more and see the link to the full course. The link will already have a discount code. So all you'll do is just browse the curriculum in that course. And if it's something that looks interesting, it looks like there's something you can learn more, then of course you're welcome to buy that course. It will be discounted. If not, then thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in my next videos.